Welcome to another tutorial from the Eva B. Dykes Library at Oakwood University. Today we're going to be looking at quantitative and qualitative evidence, and how you can tell the difference between the two types of results as you look for articles for your literature review. Let's start out with the most pressing question. What is the difference between quantitative evidence and qualitative evidence? As you can see on the screen here, qualitative evidence is powered by words, narratives, and descriptors, so it's more subjective. You'll most often see qualitative evidence in the soft sciences like sociology, anthropology, and so forth. On the other hand, quantitative evidence, and you have a clue in that word quantitative related to the word quantity, is powered by numbers and statistical analysis. This is where you'll often see graphs. It's more objective, so it's often associated with the hard sciences like math, biology, chemistry, and so forth. This is not to say that physics cannot include qualitative evidence or that linguistics can't include quantitative evidence. It's just that these fields are most often where you'll see these respective types of results. To look at quantitative and qualitative results at work, let's look at a few examples. In our first example, a research team is studying the effects of positive and negative distractions. They assign chemo patients to experience positive distractions, like watching comedies, negative distractions, like watching horror movies, or no distractions during treatment. The first researcher in this team tracks the different group's blood pressure and heart rates during treatment, while the second researcher interviews the groups during and after treatment, trying to assess how relaxed or nervous they felt. Looking at these two methodologies, which researcher do you think came up with qualitative results, and which came away with quantitative results? Take a few seconds to look at the details of each method and come to your conclusion. If you said that researcher number one came away with quantitative results, you're correct. This researcher is looking at numbers, blood pressure and heart rates, and then they're able to manipulate these figures using averages and graphs and so forth to draw quantitative conclusions. Researcher number two, on the other hand, is using a more qualitative approach, using descriptors and a narrative format to draw conclusions. In our next example, a research team is looking at how different colors have historically been associated with different genders. The first researcher in this team compiles a list of 40 popular clothes catalogs dating back to the 1890s. She looks at the baby clothing offered by each catalog and notes if certain colors are designated to a particular gender. Using this information, she is able to construct graphs showing the introduction and prevalence of certain colors for certain genders changing over time. The second researcher interviews 132 people from a wide variety of socioeconomic backgrounds born between 1915 and 1995. He asks them to discuss both the clothes they wore as children and the clothing their children wear, if applicable. Take a few seconds to look over the details of each method and decide if each one is quantitative, qualitative, or if you need more information. If you guessed that researcher number one was using a more quantitative approach, you're correct. The graphs that are mentioned right at the end there are often a good clue that you're looking at quantitative data. You might have looked at the numbers in researcher number two's method, 132, 1915, 1995, and concluded that you were looking at quantitative data there as well. However, those numbers are false friends. Look at the end where it says discuss. That's a good clue that you're working with qualitative data. It also seems unreasonable to assume that researcher number two expects the interviewees to remember every single piece of clothing they wore as children. He can't construct an exhaustive list of those items of clothing, the way researcher number one can do with the catalogs. It seems most reasonable to conclude that he's asking for this information in a more informal, anecdotal context, and he's presenting the results in a narrative format, making this method definitely qualitative.
Frequently, research students are asked to find a certain number of qualitative and quantitative articles for a class assignment. They usually have no trouble finding the quantitative articles, but the qualitative articles are often elusive. Unfortunately, most databases do not offer a quantitative, qualitative filter to help you find these articles. Instead, try including a keyword like survey, focus group, or interview in your search terms. These methodologies are often more qualitative in nature and may get you the articles you need. I hope this tutorial has been relevant and useful for you. If there's anything else we can do for you here at the Eva B. Dykes Library, I hope you'll stop by our website at oakwood.edu library. Thanks so much for listening and have a great day.